We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. Every now and then I like to do what I call reality checks. And this one, and they can be on different topics. Um, this one is gonna be a reality check, completely by the numbers from the sources that we're told are the credible sources. Okay, so let's dive right in. Let's check this out. So, this is going to be on, well, you see what this is going to be on, <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to put this in perspective for, for everyone. And like I said, I've done this before, so I do this periodically. I want you just to look at the numbers. So we're going to start off with the Johns Hopkins COVID map. And this is their coronavirus resource center, and it breaks down the world. I'm just here on the U.S. map. And what I'd like to look at here is not so much how, how it's proliferating from state to state or county to county. What I go and I, where I check is down here in this lower right side, and so this is gonna be confirmed cases. And so if we're looking at confirmed cases, we're sitting right now at 100.4 million confirmed cases since the start of this. January 1st, 2020, we're looking at 100 and 100.4 million cases. Now, just a, a side note, something I find interesting is that this used to say, it used to be, you know, confirmed cases and then it would show like in red and then in green it would show people that have recovered and then interestingly enough once the numbers no longer supported the propaganda that was being put out they completely did away with with recovered and changed the green to vaccinated which i found interesting because whenever i pulled this up and, and I can look globally and I see the cases, then I see the number recovered in green. That was hopeful because that, because every single one of those green numbers represented a life that was saved or a life that survived. Why would they do away with that? Why would they take that away in order to put vaccinated in green? They could have still added vaccinated, but they could have added it in another color, right? They could have added it in light blue or, 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 or something that's, that's inviting and, and calming, but don't you want to give the global populace hope? Don't you want to give the citizens in the United States hope so they can see like, hey, even though there are people that are getting it, look how many people are actually recovering. But I guess that wasn't a, a priority. I guess hope isn't really a priority. <laughs> so, so we have here confirmed cases and then they'll have where you can choose this tab and deaths. And deaths are at 1.1 million. Okay, and this, these numbers are from, oh, here we go. Last updated 1226 of 2022. See that right down here in the lower left. So we're sitting at 1.1 million deaths. And this is, mind you, since January 1st of 2020, right? We're about to hit January 1st of 2023. So that's, that's a long time, right? Even if you were to break that down you know, annually, that that wouldn't even be 500,000 deaths annually. Do you, do you see how that's how that's moving? Right? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, of course, it's tragic. Any loss of life is is tragic. But we we've also had an understanding that nobody gets out of this alive. We're all going to pass on. That's the natural way of things. I'm going to pass on. So it's, it's one thing to have compassion and to understand that if, if somebody goes before their time, it's tragic, but, we, but death is, is, has been a part of our, our, our civilization forever, <laughs> okay? So we have to keep this in perspective. We have to look at this dispassionately. And remember, this is a reality check by the numbers. So 100.4 million confirmed cases in the United States only, if this isn't global, United States only, and then of that, 1.1 million deaths. Now, as another side note, that's about like a 1% fatality rate, right? Which is, which is a 1% fatality rate does not constitute an emergency. It never has. 
in the beginning, they were they were saying that it's going to be above 3%. And we were going to have, I think it was something like 2 million dead by October of 2020. We still haven't hit 2 million at all. And it's not a 3% fatality rate at all. So, so we had people saying that no, it's going to be less than a percent. And people that were saying there's going to be no above 3%. And our government decided to listen to one and not listen to the other, which... Once again, begs the question, why? Why wouldn't you listen to all the experts to get all of their projections? Why would you just listen to the one that, that spelled out doom and gloom and said the sky was falling and completely ignore and censor and suppress the other? And, and let me remind you that in 2020, Trump was president. So this happened on, on, on his watch. Okay, I, I, it's my responsibility to call out my leaders because they're, they're representing me. I don't care who they are, right? Right, if you're an American citizen, that's your responsibility. Okay, so I call him out for that. I can do that and still recognize that what he was doing in the Middle East was was absolutely fantastic. What he did for our economy was absolutely fantastic. You have to be able to call out the leaders from start to finish. Once again, dispassionately. Okay, because I, I, I don't believe in idolatry. I'm not gonna just follow someone just because, oh my God, no, no. If, he, if he's speaking the truth and he's representing the Constitution and protecting and representing my interest, then I'm all for it because that's what he's there to do. But if he's not, then you have to call him on that as well. Okay? So those are the numbers there. Now what I want to show you is, it says John Hopkins. Now let's go over to the CDC. Now this is provisional COVID-19 deaths by sex and age. So let's check this out. So they've been tracking this since the beginning, since January 1 of 2020. And once again, I've shared these numbers before. So I just wanna, once again, put it in perspective. We're looking at, if we're looking at all sexes, once again, you know, we have the COVID deaths, which match John Hopkins is uh, 1,822,383. So, you know, that 1.1 million, that's, that's, they're basically spot on and Total deaths within within this time frame at nine million eight hundred and ninety nine thousand five hundred twenty one. So it really breaks this all down, and then breaks down into pneumonia deaths, pneumonia plus COVID, influenza, pneumonia, influenza, COVID. Like you know, they really really break it down. And then you can see here in years under one year, zero to seventeen years, and then they break it down further: one to four years, five to fourteen, fifteen to twenty four. So what I like to look at here is let's go to let's go to zero to 17 years old, right? Because this really speaks to schools and, and their strategies um, implementing, you know, trying to mitigate this virus within these within the school age years. Okay. That's why zero to 17 is so important here. So total now, now mind you, this is total from January 1st of 2020. Okay, this is not just this year. This is the total from 20 from January of 2020 to now. Okay, so keep that in mind. So zero to 17 years, we're looking at 1,402 COVID deaths. And then if we go over to pneumonia, here, pneumonia deaths, it's at 2,165. So see, it's it's almost double. So wouldn't that mean if, if if we're losing almost twice as many lives to pneumonia than we are to COVID, then wouldn't you think that we would at least try to mitigate pneumonia with the same fervor that they've been trying to mitigate COVID-19 since it's taking double the lives of our children? I mean, these are just questions. This, like I said, this is, this is just reality. This is reality. But how much are they talking about pneumonia, right? And then the numbers look even worse when you, when you go to like one to four years, 212 for, from COVID. And then from pneumonia and one to four years old, 471. So it's over double. Then we go to five to 14, we have 434. Then we go to pneumonia, 612. And then then it starts to, to, to change. When we go to 15 to 24 years, you're looking at 2,884. And then pneumonia is 2,698. So as we bring in the older ages, you see the numbers start to even out a bit more. So when we're looking at the zero to 17 years, you could, you could put money on, because because at 14 years, over to 14 years, it's, <laughs> look at that, 434 to 612. So 
adding in 15 to 24, adding that in is what's really bringing the numbers more even. So this is just further proof that that our younger population isn't as susceptible to COVID as they are to pneumonia. And then if you if you scroll over, it also talks about, you know, influenza as well. Right. So we're looking at zero to 17. It has, uh, you know, like I said, 1,402 from COVID. And then we go to influenza and it's 312. That's influenza only. But when we go to one to four years, we're looking at 212, 471, and then 99 from influenza. Five to 14, we got 434, 612, as I said before, and then 136 from influenza. So in the five to 14 years, we have even more fatalities from influenza. See that? And then the other thing that I want, I want to point out is that if you look at just the fatalities from COVID-19 as, as you're going by age, look at the jump from, from 24, right? If you go 15 to 24 and then you go 18 to 29, which is weird. I don't know why they would go 18 to 29 when there's 15 to 24 here. That's weird. Shouldn't this go 25 to 29? But okay, that there's going to be overlapping numbers. That's interesting. I don't know if I noticed that before. Isn't that interesting? Why would you have overlapping numbers? Because then wouldn't that pop up this number here? If they're taking three years from here and adding it, actually more than three years, they're taking 18 to 24 and throwing it into here. Because 18, 18 to 24 is already here. Then they go 18 to 29. That's That seems suspect to me. That's weird. Because that's going to inflate this number a lot. Right, because you're gonna take from here and add to here. Anyway, you see the jump. You're at uh, you know 2,800 here, and it jumps to 6,700 here. And then this is 25 to 34. So they did it again. They they keep having overlapping numbers. Did I just not notice that before? How can you have overlapping numbers? These numbers are all off. Then if they're overlapping the previous, because you're carrying over numbers. To, <laughs> wow. Wow. But hey, that's. That's a reality check for me, if I missed that before, huh? Anyway, 25 to 34, it goes from 6,700 to 11,900, and then 19,000 from 11,000 to 19,000, then to 29,000, right? So it jumps up exponentially, and then once you get above, like in this 50 to 64, once again, we have overlapping numbers, so these numbers are a bit skewed. We have overlapping numbers, but look at the jump. 69,000 in, in the 45 to 54. Once you get to 50 to 64, it jumps from 69,000 to 196,000. Look at that. 196,000. And it goes up even higher. This doesn't go up into the 80s, but they have some other numbers on the CDC, which will go into the 70s and 80s. This number jumps up exponentially. Look at that. Look at that. From zero to 17 being at 1,000, so when you get to 50 to 64, 196,000. So these numbers say that what? That COVID-19 disproportionately affects our older population, right? Disproportionately. And these numbers kind of overlap, so it kind of skews it a bit. But when you go above 64, it goes up even more. So that's very, very interesting. So remember, total deaths in the United States throughout this whole thing, we're sitting at 1.1 million, right? And then I just broke it down by age. So this poses questions for me as like, as far as our strategies go and what we do, what we did with schools and, 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 and how we try to mitigate um, the impact of the virus on our younger population, you know, poses some questions based on the numbers, the strategy, the strategies don't really fit, especially if you're looking at pneumonia being more of a threat and yet they're not addressing pneumonia the same way. So that's interesting. So then we go from there to look at how, this is once again CDC, these are, these are their weekly updates. So if you go down to comorbidities and other conditions, because, because yes, we have 1.1 million fatalities since this all started, but let's break down those numbers. Where are those fatalities coming from? And could there be any other contributing factors? And that's where this comorbidities and other conditions comes in. So let me read this. Table three shows the types of health conditions and contributing causes mentioned in conjunction with deaths involving coronavirus disease 2019. The number of deaths that mention one or more of the conditions indicated is shown for all deaths involving COVID-19 and by age groups. 
For over 5% of these deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned on the death certificate. For deaths with conditions or causes in addition to COVID-19, on average, there were four additional conditions or causes per death. For data on deaths involving COVID-19 by time period, jurisdiction, and other health conditions, other health conditions you can click to download. So what's really important here is, is this line right here. For over 5%, now, if you're going over 5%, that could be 5.2, 5.3, 5.9. I chose to go 5.5. Typically, I go 6% because they used to say 6%, but it also used to say an average, I think, of, of two comorbidities. And now that when they got more data, that jumped up to an average of four, which is the wrong direction, right? <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, so I, I chose 5.5%. So these are people that the only cause of death was COVID-19 listed on the, on the death certificate. And then for the remaining 94.5%, right? For that remaining 94.5, they had an average of four additional conditions contributing to their death. Now that's an average. In order to average four, that means that some could have had more than four, right? Enough had more than four to, to basically average it out to four, right? If you know the way math works, right? So that's a lot of additional conditions as far as being a contributing factor to death. And then when you look at the percentages, I, I broke it down, right? So if we're looking at 1.1 million fatalities and based on the CDC, if they're saying that 5.5% of that 1. million died from COVID-19 only, this is what the CDC is saying, that's 60,500 since this all started. 60,000 500 since this whole thing started, right? Based on their numbers. That means the 94.5% that's left over, okay? This is the people that had an additional four conditions on, the birth, on their death certificate as contributing factors. So they didn't die of COVID only. They just had COVID when they died, but they had other contributing factors, an average of four, okay? That's 1,039,500 since this all started. So like I said, just let's put it in perspective by the numbers. And, and then to give you a comparison, if we go to heart disease, also again, also coming from the CDC, if we go to heart disease, annually, Americans, uh, American lives that are taken from heart disease annually, according to the CDC, is sitting at 696,962 a year. Like statistically, it's like one in four. So, put it in perspective, 60,500, according to the CDC, died from COVID alone, statistically, because 5.5%. And once again, this could be 5.1, 5.2, because it just says above 5%. It could also be 5.9, right? But even if I did this at 6%, it's still going to be less than 600,000. And that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to put in perspective for you, is that if we're looking at 5.5% being 60,500 and we're about to go into 2023 and started in 2020 and annually based on heart disease is 696,000 plus just in the time that we've been battling COVID, we've lost far more people to heart disease. And also Heart disease is one of the comorbidities that's a contributing factor to fatality with COVID-19. So if we're just looking at the numbers here, just like I said, just as a reality check, if we're just looking at, at the numbers, this has been a, a pandemic of the already diseased. And according to the head of the CDC, even with the fatalities that you're finding with the vaccinated, she's... Dr. Michelle Walensky has, has stated that of those people who are vaccinated and still having fatalities, they have an average of four comorbidities. So I know that she was trying to, trying to defend the vaccine by saying, hey, these people had an average of four comorbidities, but all it does is reinforce the fact that this has been a pandemic of the already diseased. According to the CDC, this isn't what I believe. According to the CDC, whether you're vaccinated or not, if you have an average of four comorbidities, your chance of fatality is extremely high according according to the CDC 
right? I mean, these, this is just a reality check by the numbers. That's all, that's all I'm showing you. Now we'll see if, if YouTube tries to block this, trying to say this is contradicting local health officials and WHO, because that's what they try to do. I've already lost a, a channel, but as you can see here, I pulled this straight from the CDC. These are numbers that you can access at any time and I'll, and I'll provide the links and you can look it up yourself. So let's see if they if they try to deem me for this because this isn't anything that I'm I'm claiming. I'm just interpreting, or not even interpreting. I'm just reading off the data from the CDC, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Johns Hopkins map. That's all I'm doing. I'm not giving any advice on the vaccine, whether to take it or not take it. I'm not telling anybody anything. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not I'm not diagnosing anything. I'm just looking at the numbers that are being provided by the institutions that we're being told or the science and we're being told to follow the science. So I'm following the numbers. So that's all I'm doing. So that's, that's your reality check for, for today. I'll let you infer whatever you will from that. I know what the conclusions that I've come to based on this, but it's not my place to tell you how to think. I wouldn't even dream of that. But what I would encourage you all to do is turn on the light. That's all I would encourage all of you to do because they want you in the dark. And the best way, the best way to combat the dark, click, is to turn on the light. You guys be well.